Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. as Bahamians, we have to come together and fight this rise of crime and violence in our nation. You know, that's just my belief. morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. Listen guys, it's Thursday the 7th of December and you are, I am well off with that. It is not the 7th, it's not even the 8th, it got to be the 85th, it got to be the 9th of December. Boy, look here, I listened to that song by Monty G just now, right, Bahama Land, and he say it's uh, peas and rice, not rice and peas. I wanted to tell him, buddy, it's peace and rice. Don't get into no peace and rice war around here at Christmas time. It's peace and rice. That's what we eating this Christmas. Well, good morning to my audience, and I might as well introduce my guests right off the bat. Joining me today is Mr. Kino Wong, chairman of the National Neighborhood Watch Council, and along with him, is a member of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. He liaises with the National Neighborhood Watch Council, Officer Brown. Please introduce yourself, Officer Brown. Uh, good morning, Karen. Good morning, Bahamas. Uh, my name is Inspector Kendrick Brown. I am the Operation Inspector for the Neighborhood Police Unit, National Neighborhood Watch Council, and I also serve as the liaison officer for the Southwest Division. And I must say, it's always best in the West. And look how I have to kick this police officer <laughs> off my show right now. That's okay, because I thought for a moment, I thought you were, remember that song? Um, I'm Officer Brown, they call me Boy Blue. <laughs> I have a warrant to arrest you. So we can't fight, because I like that Officer Brown. <laughs> good morning, sir. Good morning. And good morning, Mr. Kino Wong. Please introduce yourself. Good morning. It's, it's a joy to be with you once again, and good morning to the... Bahamas, good morning Bahamas, and to the wider extension of the Bahamas National Neighborhood Watch Council, who comprise from Grand Bahama, Abaco, Eleuthera, Exuma, and here in New Providence. Um, we are delighted to be here with you today. A truly archipelagic organization. Yes. With bodies across the islands. That is awesome. And so, of course, we're talking safety tips for the holiday season today. Uh, I'm about to go live on my Facebook page. If you were looking out for it on the On The Clock page, it's going to pop up in a moment. Don't you rush or don't you worry. But before we get into the show, I've got a little bit of news in the papers. And so I shared with you that uh, earlier this week that my aunt, Nurse Juanita Louise Green, passed away last week. And I just wanted to share for those who were interested, friends may pay their last respects at Bethel Brothers Morticians and Crematorium. That's number 44 Nassau Street. 
on Friday, December 10th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And the services will be held at 10 a.m. on Saturday, December 11th, 2021 at Holy Spirit Anglican Church, Howard Street, Chippingham. May you rest in peace, Nurse Juanita Green, and condolences and peace and mercy and grace to the families of all of us who have lost loved ones during this time. Thank you for that moment, allowing me to share my grief with the world. It's a, the collective Amen. grief helps, and when, when we can come together as community, right, it helps us to process these traumatic things, whether they're in our lives or in our neighborhoods, right? Yeah. Um, in fact, you know, recently there was a traumatic event that occurred in the neighborhood that both, well, I like to claim that I am from Johnson Terrace. I live on the outskirts of Johnson Terrace, right? <laughs> but they, there was a tragic event there, and it was, you know, it was heartening, it was heartwarming to see and hear how neighbors and community members handled or processed the grief, collective grief, and how they shared stories about the loved one that was lost. Um, that's why I'm always happy and proud to be a part of the Johnson Road community. Johnson Road community. Good morning, Mama Co. Family, y'all better keep them cup and baggy <laughs> in the freezer. It's cold out there, but not so cold that you can't eat a good cup or baggy. Also, I want to say congratulations to the winners of the Young Chefs Award competition. Budding student chefs in the 2021 Bahamas Young Chef Culinary Competition were praised for the versatility of their dishes, knife skills, kitchen etiquette, time management, and use of indigenous Bahamian ingredients. And so we want to say congratulations to the winner in the National Junior Division for the 2020 competition. First place was Tashe Brown from North Elutra. I hope you showed him how to use that pineapple proper. Second place was Lativia Joseph from San Salvador. And third place was Donay Gibson from Sister Mary Patricia. Okay. And then I want to find my friend. See, there was somebody in this competition I was paying attention to. So the Regional Senior High Division competition, Santone M. Pugh from Doris Johnson got first place. Joyful Brown from L.N. Coakley got second place. And Mia D. Adley from Doris Johnson got third place. And in the Regional Senior High Division, first place was Elvinique Roll from Inagua All Age School. Second place was Kristen Ingram from Preston Albury. And third place was Sia Wright from McEffron International. Now, see, I was pulling for Sia Wright because she's a vegan and, and vegetarian chef, right? And while I am, some friends call me a baby vegan, some call me a struggling vegan, some call me a lion vegan. <laughs> I know that our chefs and folk, you know, our vegan chefs are the ones who are most likely to emphasize or the fullness of our local agricultural production because they mainly cook plant-based foods. And I missed out a, a, a category there, and I don't want you to think I forgot you, the National Junior High Division for 2021. First place was Timberly Morley from Preston Albury. Second place was Omega Brown from Managua All Age School. And third place was Rachel Newton from Huntley Christie. And I hope you all notice a theme here. The vast majority of these chefs is family island people. And they are browns. And they are uh, <laughs> browns. Look here. That's three browns. Oh, well, listen, can you cook? I can eat. Sorry. I can cook to eat. This boy say, I will be a part of the community. <laughs> Don't cut me out. All right, that's great. That's great. Congratulations to these young chefs. And I can show you a vibe. I hope you all are chefing it up for the people in your community. Because they're the ones who are going to need it most. If you want to join this conversation, you could text us at 422-GR96. That's 422-4796. That's powered by BTC. Standard text rates apply. You could call us at 323-6232, 325-4316, or 
five nine. We are talking safety tips for the holiday season. Wow. Okay, guys. Some texts. A whole bunch of texts came in quickly, and we're gonna read them. Great show as usual. I work for an architectural firm through Elizabeth Avenue. Question, could you describe to me in detail how a Christmas bonus look and also a Christmas party experience? Cousin, I ain't never get a Christmas bonus. You called the wrong person. I ain't never <laughs> wait long enough to get a Christmas bonus. Ah, oh, boy. No, I don't think I don't think we're gonna read the rest of that text. Ms. Green, a serious issue of tents being stolen from the farmers market on Gladstone Road, right under the noses of security officers. And it's not the first time this has happened, but I do the best I can to resolve the replacement of the tents with the security company responsible for the for the venue. Ah boy. Well, you called the right day because we are talking about community safety. Hopefully we share some information that will be helpful. Hopefully people at the Ministry of Agriculture are looking, are listening, but more importantly, hopefully, MPs and staff at the Royal Bahamas Police Force and Ministry of National Security are working on plans to provide better security in that area. I am a proponent for an entire unit in the police force dedicated to agricultural I don't think we really acknowledge the full impact that agriculture makes to the GDP, and thus we don't understand the impact of agricultural theft. Nor do we understand how difficult it is to police and patrol and provide this service, right, uh, for the agriculture sector. So there's a whole bunch of things that have to come into place. But one thing I do know is this, is that Creating a model, maybe a new providence, for agricultural theft using drones, right? That may be a great model for the Royal Bahamas Police Force to expand and implement in other areas. But me and Kai come here to tell the police anything that they don't already know. We're here to talk about the National Neighborhood Crime Watch Program and safety tips for the holiday season. So National Neighborhood Crime Watch is a program to help neighbors watch out for neighbors. The program prevents crime by ensuring that everyone keeps an eye open for suspicious activity. The ultimate success of Neighborhood Watch depends largely on a commitment to cooperation between area residents and the police, and more importantly, between residents themselves. Your neighbors know who you are, what type of car you drive, and may be the first to notice a suspicious person at your door or window. Neighborhood Watch helps you to know the neighbors around you and what their normal routines are. By simply getting to know the neighbors around you, you'll be well positioned to recognize someone or something that's suspicious. The National Neighborhood Crime Watch Council program encourages participation in crime prevention. As part of the program, you can learn, one, how to recognize and report suspicious activity in your neighborhood. Two, how to make your home less inviting as a target for thieves. And I want to add a third one there, Officer Brown. Will this program help me to quickly identify who is most likely to slip in my yard and take a couple of mangoes off the ground? <laughs> Even though there's 100 mangoes on the ground, I can't bear to lose none. Well, basically, Aaron, again, good morning, Bahamas. The National Neighborhood Watch Council, we pride ourselves on providing training for all of our members. And so this is a part of our training purpose in order to better be the eyes and ears of the police in the community. And so when we say, when you see suspicious activity, contact your police officer or your liaison yeah. officer who is actually assigned to the community. Uh, with this National Neighbor Watch Council, the Commissioner of Police has allocated eight individuals who are well-trained to provide uh, counseling, who provide experience, who will be able to lend a positive and confidential advice to members of the public. So if you have a problem, you got a person who can probably solve your problem. We'll work together. And that is our model, working together to create a safer community in order to find out who's stealing your mangoes. Yeah. Or how many mangoes you have on the I ground. mean, stealing is such a heavy word. Maybe borrowing is the word <laughs> to use. Uh, but thank you. 
Um, I want to say good morning to Officer Bethel and Officer Hamilton from the Fox Hill Division. Um, they, and I imagine they don't know it yet, but they are my liaison officers. They who I is liaison <laughs> yes. with, and um, liaise with, sorry. And that's who I refer my neighbors to if, there's, if they have an issue. Um, and, and they're prompt. And they even have a WhatsApp number, man. Yes. And do, do most stations or liaison officers have a WhatsApp number to communicate with? Well, at, at this time, um, we have 11 policing divisions with 11 liaison officers. Yeah. Eight of the, those 11 have, well, all of us have our, our cell phones who have quick access to members of our community, especially persons who are involved in the National Labor Watch Council. Right. So, um, like, I have a government phone right now, and yeah. my phone is on me 24 hours, even if I'm off the island. I am easily accessible to members of the community. Right. And I want to say to other officers, like, even if you on break, right, or you off duty, keep your phone on. We don't <laughs> expect you to answer or to respond, but forward the information yes. quickly. And, and I want to say this because sometimes the communication services in my neighborhood may not be as good as the ones in your, where you are right now. Mm -hmm. And we just facilitate communication like that. Yes. That is awesome. Now, so let's talk about how the police work with the National Watch Council to provide these services? Well, it's a, it's a proper partnership, and we're divided. We actually have uh, Superintendent Wilson Jones is actually the person responsible for, and he is the police liaison manager. Uh -huh. um, and then we work closely with the chairman here, and both of us come under the national coordinator, who is now Ms. Ismela Delancey, Davis Delancey. Yes. And so our job is actually making sure that the community feels safe within the areas that they live. And so you'll find out that information is shared from the police to the community and yeah. from the community to the police. As a result of this partnership and this relationship, we have found out that crime is decreasing rapidly because of the shared information from both sides. Um, the Commissioner of Police used an acronym. The police is the community and the community is the police. We only pay to provide the services to the community. That's yeah. all we're there for. And so we are actually also members of the community. In fact, I live in an area called Carol's Man off Lazaretta Road. Mm -hmm. We have a community watch as well. I am a part and I'm a resident of that. So I'm active in my community watch. Why? Because I have a stake to play. And so even though I'm a police officer and a liaison officer for the area, I know the information I am shared by the chief to the to the chairman and, and to the presidents of the area. Mm -hmm. um, my area has about 26, almost 30 communities that we manage. And each one of those communities are actually sharing information with us. Information is problem where we have persons involved in serious crime being arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, persons who are pro prolific uh, uh, stealers or yeah, robbers, yeah, those persons. And you'll find out that um, even though uh, you said talk about the farmers, the yeah. farmer's market, I pay special attention to the farmer's market. Basically, every Saturday I visit. Um, we have a vibrant because Carmichael Road is actually the hub of farms. Yeah. And so there is a farmer's association in that area. And so we, we, especially with down-to-earth farms, we communicate with, yeah. with the president, uh, Karen Sherman, uh, Shepherd, on a regular basis. And these farmers are actually reaching out to the police. Um, and in terms of drone purposes, we are already mapped out the farming populations inside those areas. Awesome. So we are doing some work. And this is just a relationship between the communities and the police. Absolutely. Now, when you go down to down-to-earth, I need you to... Go across the road to uh, the Edgars uh -huh. and just let Miss Edgar know you're there and everything is safe. Okay. And the, veg the vegetables could s sleep safe at night. Yes. Yeah, yes. That's awesome. Uh, because I don't, so two things. I don't think that people understand sort of the impact they make when they enter a neighborhood, right? Uh, how they affect people. Um, where I live, a lot of cars come through, and people, and what I've, Here's the thing that happens in my neighborhood. People will sort of pull off the main road. Like, they're trying to be responsible. Mm -hmm. They pull off the main road because they won't use their phone. Mm -hmm. They pull off and they pull in, in front of somebody's house and just get on their phone, and they're on their phone. And then, I, like, I, so I came out of the house one day after watching this guy for about 15 minutes on his phone. I'm like, 15 minutes is a long time to pull off the road, you yes. know? And so I wa sort of walked out. A neighbor had already called me and said, hey, you know who this guy is, right? And so I walked out, and the guy, I, when you say screw face, oh, man. <laughs> that it was, if you had seen the face, you would say, Miss Green, I tell you don't approach strangers, right? Mm -hmm. Screw face. But I have a problem. That just emboldened me, and I walk up to him. 
and I said, good day, sir, how are you? Do you need any assistance, you know? And he was really cool, he was like, I, anybody like, you know, anybody tell you I need assistance? I asked for help, I went, and so I said to him, I said, you know, uh, we've had a number of incidents in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I just want you to be aware that people are monitoring, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just came out to, to see if you were okay, you know? And so he's about to bite back at me, and then he sort of caught himself and realized, and I imagine what went through his head was, you know what? If I was in my house and my wife says she see man mm -hmm. park outside, mm -hmm. I'd go in outside too to find out what's going on. <laughs> yes. I think a lot of people don't think about it when they're driving, how people you know, how they appear and how people are responding to them. I want to sort of send out a reminder to people, when you're in other people's neighborhood, remember how you would want to be treated in your own neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll I'll tell you, Erin, that uh, and uh, over our 90-something 90, 90 communities in Providence. That is just what we encourage. And we, we, we have persons calling, especially calling the liaison officers on a daily basis, mm -hmm. saying that there is a suspicious vehicle. It's suspicious because it's not known to the area, um, especially where you come and you park in front of somebody's residence. Well, that's an alarm. I, I'll get, the minute you park there, two minutes you park there, a president will call or somebody will call or they'll say, well, Inspector Brown, listen, I see this. Mm -hmm. And they give me the whole full details of your vehicle. And so what we do is we dispatch vehicles quickly. Mm -hmm. Why? Because, you know, our job as police officers is to prevent crime. And what is preventing crime? Because of the shared information. No matter how small it is, it helps us in our investigations. Mm -hmm. And so that car that is parked there, and especially what we tell with our trainings with the National Neighborhood Watches, and we tell persons who took the training, that, listen, if you see a car reversed in Ms. Mary yard, and the car does not belong to Ms. Mary, or you know Ms. Mary off the island, that should send an alarm and say, listen, but let me call the police right away. Or let me call to see if Ms. Mary is expecting anybody because that could be somebody who's actually going and to enter Ms. Mary's house without her permission and take her belongings. Right. Because, you know, our job in, for, for safety tips is we try to, to prevent crime, to teach you how not to become a, a, a victim of crime. That is our message as an organization. Yeah. We try to ensure that you are not a victim of crime and give you the tips and, and sometimes the training and the information you will need not to become one. Now listen, I, I have, in my research, I found there were a number of events that I would have attended if I knew about <laughs> them. But it, no, it's me. I wasn't paying attention to my community, right? And so what I wanna ask Mr. Wong is, what are the, what are the other, tell the people, because I get a sense myself, but tell the people what are the other sorts of activities that the councils engage in and do you all get paid? In fact, I want to ask you specifically how long you've been doing this, and do you all get paid because this is paid work? This is labor, good labor, labor that we all appreciate. You know, um, first of all, uh, it's volunteer work. I've been a part of the program from the inception of 2018 uh, to now. Mm -hmm. uh, many of our community leaders do this because they they love their communities as the national chairman no it's not a paid salary do we get um incentives no we don't mm -hmm. we do it because it's embedded in us to know that we want a safer and better communities for all and so therefore um if someone believes that coming into this program they're going to gain financially from serving as a community president or being at the level that of a chairman or the executive team, then um, this is not for you at this time. Mm -hmm. You have to have a heart for community work. You have to find a niche. If you don't find your niche in doing community work, you will get very um, discouraged and um, you will not succeed to have the ability to lead your communities. I know you asked about um, some of the activities that may have taken place over the weekend. First of all, in the Southwestern Division, um, the Blue Hill Estate Neighborhood Watch, under the leadership of Shakara Adley, um, they had a wonderful um, Christmas production on Friday Pass on the property of Chapel on the Hill mm -hmm. of Tony Williams Dallin Highway, which is under the leadership of Inspector Brown. Awesome. And so... That community had about close to about 200 individuals that was present at that, that event, and it was a success. 
Great. We, you know, and so the the member of parliament was all was there too to bring greetings. The pastor of the church was there as well to bring greetings, and of course the president for that community. And I think that her her entire executive team, um, I should say, is um, well done. Mm -hmm. They did well for 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 a first time production on Friday. Awesome. Listen, I'm going to get to these calls. I want to say this. Look at this. Um, for the last few weeks, I've been talking about how can we do Junkanoo differently? How can we maintain tradition but uh, also adhere to the restrictions and the protocols, right? And uh, the Neighborhood Watch Associations surely form. This is a good opportunity because we could use these groups to maintain communal activity. Because remember, guys, Junkanoo started off as community-based, mm -hmm. right? Um, <coughs> it's a great way that we can begin to preserve Junkanoo. I need to get to Johnson Terrace yet. Because I imagine about 15 people done call your office to find out how Aaron Green could try join our community association and we ain't in it yet. We can work on that too. <laughs> Let's get to these calls. Call you on the clock. Good morning. Good morning. Green. Good morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good. I enjoy listening to your show. There's two shows on um, Guardian that I normally just watch out for. I'm so thankful. But I'm happy this morning to hear the officer who says that he is a part of the neighborhood watch and that he lives on the Lazaretta Road. Mm -hmm. Sir, oh my God, um, right in the back there, I have had all kinds of problems from just one or two individuals, you know. And the little children, some little children live on Carmichael Road just out of the Lazaretta Road. It's about four or five of them. And they maraud the, the whole, the night, half of the night. They be up and down and through the place. I heard the noises in my yard the other day, and they make it a practice. Oh, boy. And they told me, I said, hi, do you live in this yard? They say, Mama, we only want to borrow it for the night. These are little children from maybe 6 to 10 or 12. But let me say who I am. My name is Joan Newbold. And I am the person who is here from since Officer Ismael, Ismeralda Davis, and that's her name, and Mr. Dames. They, they attended our neighborhood watch committee in the 80s, right? Wow. In the evenings. And they even did little patrols around here. So it's not, I'm supposed to be well known, except probably for the new persons who have moved in lately, because most of the persons in my age group has died. I'm in the early 80s, all right? Yes, ma'am. But I would like sometimes, if you do have the time, to stop by me. I don't move around a lot because my legs give me a little bit of problem. But you have a lot of problems right in that same area, the Lazaretta Road and in the back there. So thank you so much. It seems as if you all are doing or trying to do a very good job. Continue and do it, but... um. I would like to meet you, sir. You all have a beautiful day. Thank you, Miss Green, for allowing me to just push everything up. And that's not everything, but mm -hmm. trying to get some little... Oh, this last one. This is a hateful one. All right, ma'am, don't hang up the phone. Yeah, no, I'm going to finish give, right now. No, no, give the, give the number to the producer before you hang up the phone, okay? And I will give your number to Inspector Brown before he leaves the studio. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you're giving me this minute for to say this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I came in partially sick on Sunday from Fort Lauderdale, all right? Yes, ma'am. And we were those, put, I was in that group that was put off that couldn't get on the plane because we didn't have the, the travel visa. Right. Yes, ma'am. And you know that made me feel extra bad. However, during the evening time, once we were in, uh, someone said to me, there's a fire in the back of your yard. I say, a fire? I'm not doing good. What is it all about? So I say, I don't know. I only see a fire back there. So I called 919. And this is how the officer answered me when he did answer. It was a mail. What is your, what is your emergency? Yes. Yes. I tell you what Do you it, think an officer should address the public no matter who it is like that? Okay, ma'am, I gonna be I okay, I, I really appreciate what you're saying. Um I appreciate what you and how you felt in that moment. I, I gonna I gonna take defense for the police officers this time. So it's two things. You see that officer, he already answered thirty five calls in fifteen minutes. 
before he picked up the phone. And so they get into, in their mind, they get into a, a zone, right? And they have to maximize the amount of time they have. In fact, 911 operators will, will hang up on you sometimes if you're not clear enough, giving you space to calm down and call back. And so it's not that he's being rude. It's just that the times have changed, ma'am. And there's so much in front of that officer every moment that he doesn't always have the time to express the niceties. Plus, you call in the emergency line. That is the one place where I don't expect niceties from police officers. Because the training is get the information as quickly as possible and cause the caller to focus on giving me only the information I absolutely need. And so that means that you remove the niceties. Plus, we got these police officers waking so hard, ma'am. They waking so hard. Forgive him for me. Anyway, thank you so much, caller. Another caller on the line, and then I got to go to a break. Caller, you're on the clock. Good morning, Aaron Grant. Hey, good morning. How you doing? Uh, I think of the officers today. I have today Inspector Brown from the Southwest Division and right. Chairman of the National Watch Council, Mr. Kino Wong. Well, good morning, everybody. It's Jesse good Inspector. Morning, uh, good morning to you. Um, when do, do they have Inspector? Do they have a, a, a neighborhood watch in the Freetown area? Yeah, yes, we do have. Um, we. We yeah we're developing some programs in there. Okay. Um, we we have of have already uh, conducted a number of walkabouts in there uh, in conjunction with the Urban Renewal Division. But you're not established yet. Um, no, no, sir. Uh, that that's the intercity is actually what's important to us, and that's all of them, mainly because of what's happening as it relates to crimes against a person. And so, well, it's not really a crime, my area, but just like. Unity and watch out for other folks coming in the area. Yeah, yes, mm-hmm. um, well, basically, the National Neighbor Watch Council just don't. We are com- we have two components. Crime being one, socialization is a second, and socialization means bringing the community together, right. taking taking you back to what we're used to. Um, I, I'm young, but I'm an old soul, mainly right. because I, I I grew up in the inner city. I'm the product of Wilson Track. And um, I n- grew up knowing what neighbors is. What I'm talking about, if if Ms. N- Ms. Nazi cooked uh, and you to Ms. Nazi hoax, you you will eat. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes, or if Ms. Carolyn, who's selling baggies, if you were right. there, she will offer you baggies. So these are the type of things we, we're we actually, um, we're being quite successful. It's successful meaning we've already won an international award right. with our product. Right. Like, like, like that, the country show, because I know Aaron Green got other cards. Uh-huh. Like my Wolf Road, I'm, I'm, I am in the division of the Wolf Road Police Station. Okay. They are not like y'all. They, they are not walking through. They're not trying to get to know their their neighbors. Okay. So hopefully, with, with the trend and the Fox area. Well, like let's, let's rephrase that. What we want to do is we want to figure out. I don't want you to prim it up now. You want to get prim it up. How, how we can. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not getting out of no, here. No, 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 no. I, let, let, me, let me answer you. Uh Wolf Road has a, a liaison officer who has two officers that her sister, and that is Sergeant Sweeting. Right. Um, and you can always reach Sergeant Sweeting at her, uh, at her, uh, at the station. But I want to be like you. Well, I, I listened to you a while ago. Mm-hmm. Your, your area song, good. My area, I want your, my area, talk to her. All right. I this, want that area to be like so, my okay. area. So here's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to... Make sure that you could get in touch with Sergeant Sweden. Sergeant Sweden going to get you in touch with the National Watch Council team members in your community. And we're going to start working towards turning your community into a community like Johnson Terrace or into the community in the southwest where Inspector Brown lives. I appreciate what you said. In all communities. Yeah, exactly. And, not with, and like my community. I am an advocate. And a right, and a, what you call it? Uh, yeah, human rights advocate. Human rights advocate. So Thank I you. want which what to stop the free town area to have. You, you you could get in contact with my MP and work together. Listen, um, tell the tell the people your name again so they understand who you are. My full name or the Punkinita? Your full name. Punkinita. Oh, okay. 
Cedar L. Maffey. Right. Okay, okay, Mr. Markley. So you can reach me on Facebook. All right. So, Mr. Markley, this is what we're going to do right uh-huh. now. Uh, the 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 council and the neighborhood police unit. Every two weeks, we do a walkabout. I think um, we are scheduled to do a, a walkabout in in your community very 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 soon. Okay. Inbox me. You got the name Peter yeah. L. Markley. I, I have it. I'll pass it on to him before the end. Right. Then 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 call me and we wait to we'll wake it up. All right. All right. That sounds good, Mr. Markley. Yeah. I, I I want. I love community. Yes. That's why I, I, I'm so such an advocate for local government. Yeah, man. Thank you so and much. Gentlemen, continue to go to work and look, looking forward to meeting with you soon. All right. Thank All you, right. sir. So, right. Arlington, I, I realize we ain't going to no break. Let's go to a break. And when we come back from the break, we're going to go through our safety tips while driving, while, when out and about, home and in the community, um, and when in your backyard. Oh, when while shopping. <laughs> Whether you're shopping for gifts, for groceries, or for mangoes. <laughs> We're going to a break. Stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You're on the clock with Aaron Green. Like what you're hearing on the show? Want to support the conversation? Sponsor On The Clock today. Call Janet Lees at 302-2304. That's 302-2304. Be the solution. Sponsor On The Clock of Aaron Green, where she dissects, we discuss, and you decide. Always on the go? Miss the show? You can now listen to Guardian Radio talk shows anytime, anywhere on Spotify and YouTube by searching Guardian Radio 96.9 FM or by entering the name of your favorite show. You can also listen by logging on to GuardianTalkRadio.com and clicking on the podcast tab. Guardian Radio, continuing to provide you with fresh news and smart talk anywhere, anytime, all day. At Fidelity, the holidays are all about family, spending time with loved ones, and being thankful for the little things in life. Worrying about bills should be the last thing on your mind, especially during the holidays. Let Fidelity help you get your bills under control. Fidelity can also get you started with a real savings plan that actually pays you interest. The only thing you need to think about is what you will do with the savings in your pocket this Christmas. Now that's what I'm talking about. Fidelity Bank is here for you this holiday season because you are family, and family is important to us. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Good morning and welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. You're on the clock with Erin Green. I am in studio with Inspector Brown from the Southwest Division and Mr. Kino Wong, Chairman of the National Neighborhood Watch Council. Uh, We are heading towards the end of the show. Whoever just called me, you can't call the text line. It doesn't work like that. Our call numbers are 323-6232-325-4316 or 325-4259. So, Mr. Wong, tell us briefly what the NWC is and how we could find out, I could find out if there is a neighborhood watch in my community. The Bahamas National Neighborhood Watch Council is a part of the comes under the umbrella of the Ministry of National Security. Okay. So therefore, um, it falls under the leadership of the minister, Wayne Monroe, and his executive team okay. at the ministry. And of, of course, we have the national coordinator, uh, Mistress Ismela Davis Delancey. Okay. And so therefore, the program is um, it will seek to provide current and future neighborhood um, watch groups with a national platform to assist um, in eradicating, getting rid of crime, but also to create a safer environment. Um, I think like Inspector Brown said earlier, um, it's all about, not just about the crime aspect of it, but it's about knowing who are the people in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's not that you're looking out for the boy who is scoping, who's going to be the next prolific thief in your neighborhood. Sometimes you just realize that my neighbor's daughter, this place be coming to house. A lot. And he, this ain't like the young one. 
the, this ain't like the young one who's come to the house. This one is a little, a little older. Yeah. So in essence to that, we, we also look out for, for um, suspicious activities in yeah. our communities, right? And we encourage our, our presidents. There's, one, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a particular uh, mantle that we use, which is observe and report. Mm -hmm. We encourage our community leaders to observe and report. You're not a police officer. Right. So don't engage. Don't engage. Yeah. But there are times that in our community, Johnson Terrace, for instance, a couple of weeks ago, we saw about three young men sitting on our community park. And we, we approached them and asked them why. The guy said, because it seems to be a quiet community and we just want to smoke. We said not on this part. Yeah. Because if you encourage that once, then those three are going to add another two. Mm -hmm. And then soon you will not have control of your own environment. And so therefore, um, we encourage neighbors to, to observe and to watch out for one another. Mm -hmm. But the NNWC um, is a, a group of individuals from all sectors of life. Mm -hmm. We have government employees. We have entrepreneurs. We have doctors involved. We have um, business owners, um, educators. Police officers are also presidents in their communities. And so overall, we, we consider that the NNWC is the, the ultimate primary um, community program that we will encourage every community to be a part of. Mm -hmm. You know, you ask a question if it's paid for. You know, we hope that someday, you know, um, someone sends a message. I guess I respond to their text. Um, yeah, Dr. Wells, um, hopefully someday that it will be a paid job because the, the, the responsibilities that falls on the chairmanship mm -hmm. is a greater responsibility. If you look at the layout of it, it's a full-time job. Yeah. And so someone has to be dedicated to the course mm -hmm. to get it done. All right? So at the end of the day, we, we encourage our communities to make sure that the individuals that they also um, elect as presidents are individuals that are available, that are that has the time mm -hmm. to to make things happen in their their communities. Absolutely. Somebody just sent me a number, say three zero two seven zero zero three. That's is that a contact number for a police uh, for one of the liaison officers? Why you send me this number? No, not three zero two. Three. Seven. Yeah. Three zero two seven zero zero three. Yeah. Well, listen, to wherever you're listening, you know I ain't calling you back. Okay, well. Yeah, yeah. I just wondered if it was somebody who's trying to sort of answer a question, like how to get in contact with somebody. Well, I'll say this. If, if there's a community that is interested in being a part of the NNWC. Yeah. In New Providence alone, we have over 11 districts in terms of police divisions, right? Right. You can go to the, to the nearest police division and speak to the commander in charge of that station right. and ask them to connect you with the community liaison officer right. who will assist you in creating a neighborhood watch what? program or, in your community. Or identifying one that already exists near you, if not in your community. And I, I will say this. They can also call 457 Zero three eight three, and I'll repeat that number again, four five seven, zero three eight three, and that is um, Inspector Brown. All right. Okay. So, I say his number because I know that he will be the one since he's the operational manager for the liaison officers, mm -hmm. that he will be able to direct them also to the right officer who may be able to assist them. In helping create that community awesome. watch. So look here, I was I was I was about to jump into some tips while shopping, right? And this is a general tip. I want to say to people, don't travel with plenty of money. <laughs> Whether you go and shopping, right? Whether you're going out to dinner or you're going out to, to party, especially if you're going out drinking, you don't need plenty of money because you ain't going out to get drunk, right? You ain't right. going out to get bus up. You're only going out to have fun. Mm -hmm. If you're walking in your community, if you're exercising. Don't travel with plenty of money. And this person sent me this text saying, at Christmas time, don't take your mangoes on the road with you, Aaron, <laughs> to spend up. I thought he was sending me a safety tip. He can be in my yard looking for my mangoes. Well, guess <laughs> what? We know 
mm-hmm. that JT and Bonnie is brothers and sisters community. R- right. So if they try to come in Bonnie, we can find them too. Right. And the the neighborhood watch councils use cam they use cameras, right? Well, some communities. Some communities um, has uh, CCTV cameras, but we also encourage our residents who have cameras to allow at least one to b- be positioned on the street. Right, to catch catch the corners. Yes, the just people to catch are driving. Corners. All right. So, we're almost out of time. Give us your top uh, safety tip when out shopping. I'll ask Inspector Brown yeah. to give three, and then I'll, I'll turn around and give three. Okay. Well, Aaron, in Bahamas, you know, the police force always pride itself in having tips basically for everything. Yeah, yeah. So, we have one just handy for the holidays. And the first one, always secure your home before leaving. Yes. Make sure your door windows and doors are locked. Because Bahamian thieves, they don't want to buck you. They no. waiting for when you out. When you gone, yeah. then they come in. And then let me say, you got to be very careful while you are shopping. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the ladies carry those big, I call them carry-on bags as purses now. Mm-hmm. And that is a target. We, we always want to say is, always have your little purse on you um, so that you just got your little money and you carry whatever it is out of the shop. Never travel with large... You said it correctly, Aaron. We thought about that. Never travel with large sums of money, uh, basically because you make yourself a vulnerable target. Then we go on and say, when using the ATM, only take as much money as you need. And uh, I I know ATMs only uh, give you a certain amount of money, but take as much as you need. Mm -hmm. Never discard empty boxes which contains newly bought items. Leave that 60-inch flat screen TV box in the house. Or cut it up. Or cut it up. Right, Right. put it in the bag. Um, Discard it properly because you make yourself a target. You advertising what you have inside the house. Correct, correct. And then, listen, number six, ensure that you use old door. Make sure, for the Christmas trees, make sure those cords are properly secured. Because we try to not prevent fire during Christmas. Right, so make sure that they are outdoor lights and not indoor lights that you use. Don't be an errand. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so now, Mr. Wong, before we go, first thing first. Well, first thing first, I want to ask you about the how do Fox Hill Division, National Neighborhood Watch Council, and Chief Superintendent Earl Thompson work together to make these pro work together, right? How you know about Earl Thompson? Listen, I know about plenty of things. Let me tell you what else I know about. How come Johnson Terrace could have a whole annual Thanksgiving and Christmas luncheon and I didn't know about that until yesterday? Well, I dare to say this. Hats off to my community. Yes. I call it my community. We have been doing the Thanksgiving Christmas luncheon for six years. Okay. Six years. And all of our community residents partnership together. Uh-huh. The women come together. I, I, I set the menu along with Miss Hyler, uh-huh. uh, one of our leaders as yeah. well. And we set the menu. We put it in our WhatsApp group and our residents respond. They respond to every need we need. Yeah. We don't have to worry about asking anyone else to come in and to assist. This year we had the Bahamas Transformer Band came in, which was a 50-piece band that, that serenaded our community and they did an excellent job, and this was their second time um, with us um, for back-to-back years. And so last year, December, we had it. This year, December, we had it. Um, and so our community is a knitted, like you know, it's more like a family island community yeah. where everyone gets along with each other. And so if someone is going away, they let us know. If someone's coming home late, they let us know. If someone is in need in our community, they let us know. Uh-huh. Now, I like that question that you asked. I know time is running for yeah. us. Um, about the NNWC with the Fox Hill Division. Yeah. I dare to say, we have a liaison officer by the name of Shanique Burrows, Corporal Shanique Burrows, okay. who is the neighborhood liaison officer for the entire Fox Hill Division. But also, we have an excellent leadership team of Chief Superintendent Earl Thompson and his executive team in the Fox Hill Division. I must say, I don't know about the rest of the division, but it's sure best in the East <laughs> with, with um, Chief Superintendent Earl Thompson, um, yeah. Officer Brooks, I love him. Officer Sands, I love Officer Bob. I, I could I, go on and on. When I, when I call, I hear them sigh in the background. I say, they say, I bet you she called him about mangoes and raccoons again. <laughs> I bet you. Right? You know, but they don't never hang up on me. I love and it. And we have once a month. Yeah. And as a Facebook, uh, those who are live by Facebook, I don't know about your community, 
in the neighborhood watch, but I can brag about the Fox Hill Division. Once a month, we meet as community leaders with Earl Thompson and his team. And we talk about crime trends and how we can continue to build our relationship with the Royal Bahamas Police Force leadership team of Fox Hill. And I'm going to say this. Ever since he came in that division, yeah. we have seen tremendous, tremendous partnership with the police and the community. Well, listen, even the raccoons came to me and said, Miss Green, we ready to work with you all, man. This Amen. Because you know we get a million, we have a whole raccoon community in it, Fox Hill. Yes, we do. And Johnson Road, yeah. And they're on my roof too. Yeah, yeah. You sound like man on the roof. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they'd be teething your, your fruit, so how we can lock them up? We got to ask Inspector Brando, so how we can lock up the raccoon with the with the original well, man I don't, on the I don't, I don't want to say it, but I have a raccoon who's ready to snitch. <laughs> I got a raccoon who's ready to snitch. But yeah. I want to say this too yeah, before yeah. you go. I just want to say thank you to the Ministry of National Security yes. for allowing us to be on with you today. We thank the minister, along with the PS, um, um, acting PS Davil, mm -hmm. along with her executive team, and also to our national coordinator, Mistress Ismela Davis Delancey. And I just want to say um, good afternoon or good morning to, to my executive team, mm -hmm. um, who, will, who comprises here in New Providence, Abaco, Eleuthera, and Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. I want to say hats off to them and Good day and happy holidays to all of our community leaders throughout the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, we're all out of time. I just got to say this on air. Thank you to the texter from the South Ocean community that would like to make a contribution to the National Neighborhood Watch Council. I will share your information with my guests once we're off the air. I thank you. To make thank that you. known out loud. Thank you. Thank you, producer, and thank you to Levon Miller for letting me run on for an extra three minutes with the Royal Bahamas Police Force and the National Neighborhood Watch Council under the chairmanship of Mr. Kino Wong and under the direction of uh, Officer... Johnson, Superintendent Dave, Johnson. Superintendent Johnson. And, and Mistress Davis, Davis Delancey. Delancey. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Thank you so much, you guys. Stay tuned to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM because Unleashed with Levon Miller is up next. Have a great day.